So when was the last time you threw a piece of plastic away? This morning? Yesterday? In my case, it was actually yesterday after I ate my lunch salad and I had this uh, cutlery made from plastic and I didn't find an appropriate uh, place to put it for recycling, so I threw it away. We were all surrounded by pieces of plastic that are in use for a very short time and we keep on throwing them away. We have been doing that for, de <laughs> for decades <laughs> and we keep on doing that. In my former life, I was an industrial designer, which means I deal a lot with uh, materials and, let's say, the appropriate materialization for a certain product. So, I mean, plastics are a wonderful material if you're designing a, a car, if you're designing a furniture, if you design something that uh, lasts for, let's say, 10 years, 20 years, even more. However, using petrol-based plastics for single-use parts is not the smartest solution, in my opinion. So, designing parts, thinking about material materialization of uh, products, I get fed up of all these short-life plastic parts. And I decided to do something against that and I wanted to invent a new material. And inventing a new material means what is that material made of? And if you think about resources, it was quite obvious to use waste streams. So that was when the waste to value idea was born. And that was really 10 years ago when nobody was talking about circular economy back then. Nowadays, Circular economy is uh, one of the buzzwords. It uh, describes an economical system in which materials and feedstocks are kept within the loop as long as possible, which makes obviously sense. The reality, however, is that the amount of plastic waste being that escapes into the oceans every year amounts five plastic bags of plastic waste per foot of coastline all around the world. The recycling quote in the European Union is around, is around 30%. In the US, it's as low as 9%. And we're talking about circular economy. Come on. We cannot recycle the problem away. What we need is new radical ideas we need to implement game-changing ideas now. What we need are, <coughs> are solutions to keep materials in the loop. Solutions to use waste streams and side streams as a raw material. Raw materials that are available in industrial production, in agriculture, and use those to produce materials and not petrol-based plastics. And that will have a massive impact on transport distances, on energy consumption, and correspondingly on the carbon emissions. So let's take an example again. Remember the fork I was speaking in the beginning. We have parts, they're being produced, they are used for hours, minutes, sometimes almost seconds, and then in the best case, they're being recycled. In the most of the cases, they are either incinerated or burned. That just doesn't make sense at all. We need to substitute those parts with materials made from waste streams and side streams. Think corn cobs, think nutshells, think wheat spelter, think rice husks, the available amount of natural feedstock that is not being used is massive. And all of these cellulosic fibers 
our the feedstock for our material. At the same time, technologies to deploy those materials for material production are technology, technological available and parts are already being produced. So this is the waste to value concept. It comes with two big advantages. First, we produce less waste, which we will have to dispose of um, in a costly way. And second, we don't need to mine for new raw materials, but use and add value to existing ones. In order to reduce plastic pollution, to fight climate change, to implement the circular economy, we'll have to upcycle organic waste streams into materials. So, if we talk new materials, we should, of course, also think about the end-of-life scenario. So, we have waste to value to soil, waste to value to energy, and waste to value to recycling. So, here it comes again. So, first, waste to value to soil. Since uh, the waste to value materials are all made up from organic waste streams and side streams, they can be composted. And with composting, I don't mean um, industrial composting, I mean home compostable, literally in your backyard. Waste to value to energy. Burning uh, waste streams to produce energy is great. However, using those waste streams before burning them to produce raw materials out of them and out of that, them, of those raw materials produce parts, recycle them and use them over and over and over again and at the end of the life cycle of those products, burn them makes more sense and no energy is being lost. And now comes waste to value to recycling, which is a difficult topic. On one hand, um, turning materials into uh, waste streams into materials is uh, upcycling per definition. And of course we want to keep the products made from these materials as long in the loop as possible. And also it's clear that recycling is the best end of life scenario. But as we have seen in the, in the beginning, Recycling is not yet implemented on a really uh, large scale, and that is mainly due to the lack of infrastructure. All the con every country has a different uh, system. Sometimes, even within the countries, you have uh, different uh, collecting systems in the communities, and that makes it really difficult to collect materials for recycling. So, why? Doesn't have to, uh, why does nothing happen anyway? Because money talks. At the time being, classical plastics are still cheaper than alternatives. But we are not there, oh, not we, I mean, there is no full cost accounting. So if we take the pollution that is uh, uh, bad for our health, if we take the microplastics, that uh, are ending up in our food chain. If we think about uh, plastic pollution that ends in the ocean, in the nature, if we think about the carbon dioxide that is heating up the planet, these are all costs to society. These costs are not yet implemented in the cost of the material themselves, but we pay them. And if we take all that in consideration, um, alternatives made from waste streams, for example, are actually cheaper. The good news is also that legislations are changing, plastic taxes are coming up, um, the public opinion is changing, and events like Countdown to Zero, the Friday for Future movement are putting pressure on politicians and on the big corporates. And also, we should keep in mind that using waste streams 
and turning them into material is a massive business opportunity. So we need to find solutions to close loop in an economical and in an economical meaningful way. And one option to do that is the waste to value approach. So natural fibers, natural binders, and additives, the so-called magic powder, are being mixed together. All the ingredients are either organic or mineral and absolutely non-toxic. And out of these raw materials, um, granulates are produced. And these granulates are then transformed into products. And these materials are a great way to make existing or new parts more sustainable. And since it's all on a natural base, it's a very sustainable way to do so. So, circular economy is a complex thing. All the stakeholders are, are, um, are needed to move and to get involved to push things forward. Solutions are available, we just need to implement them. And again, we cannot recycle the problem away. That's not going to work. So, we're, talk, uh, we're done with the talking. It's really time for action now. So, I want you to think, think about what really matters to you. Come up with ideas, make, a, make your own brainstorm what you think is important. Shoot for the stars and come up with a really bold vision. When I started uh, the ways to value concept 10 years ago, so, and I told people about, that I'm, I'm going to turn <laughs> waste into a material. They said, Bear, that's never ever going to work. I mean, nobody is going to buy materials made from a waste stream. I mean, even most of my friends told me that I'm crazy. Well, I took that as a, mm, a good start. However, I didn't know then on what, what, a, what of a hell of a ride I was going and how many iterations of trial and error I was supposed to go through. So together with my team, we invented, we experimented, we tried, we built prototypes, we failed, we went back, we improved, we developed further, we failed again and we failed again over and over and over again. However, we have always been sticking to our vision. We adapted the way to implement it, but we never lost the purpose. That's uh, super important from my perspective. And the even more important thing is build a great team. So if I look back now, what my team has achieved in 10 years, I think if people are telling you you're crazy with your idea, that's actually a quite good start. So, Go out, invent, showcase your ideas, build up alliances, build a great team. And I would love to see some of you in some years to become my competitor. So let's turn our visions into reality and get stuff done. Thanks. <laughs>